In 2011, Wayne will premiere new work for the Royal Ballet and the Paris Opera Ballet, as well as an opera by Mark Anthony Turnage for Wayne McGregor Random Dance at Saddle as well. In 2012, McGregor will create a major public dance work in Trafalgar Square for the Olympics, and in 2013, he will create a new rite of spring for the Bolshoi Ballet. <laughs> As Bob, as Sir Bob Scott said earlier, we and Wayne have wanted this to happen for quite a few years, but because of his punishing work schedule, it has taken until December 2010 to finally get him here. But here he is. Thank you. Realising that it asked me that there would be ten brilliant speakers before me. A song. A, a fantastic parade of high heel shoes. And this incredible flower object. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. Um, it was really with great enthusiasm and honour that I accepted um, Anthony's invitation to be with you today. Um, I have a very strong fondness and connection to Trinity Larbin. And I feel it's a fantastic opportunity for me to share and to celebrate not only the students' incredible achievements at this time of graduation, but also in the dedicated and inspirational staff that have guided, directed, massaged, quite literally, and nurtured the students here towards a healthy and fulfilling creative life. Without such passionate and articulate advocates for imaginative thinking through the body, many of us would be lost. Artistic staff, mentors, administrators, technicians, the whole Trinity Larvin team, really a heartfelt thank you. To parents, guardians and supporters, we know the personal sacrifices many of you have undertaken in order to fully support your children, partners, friends, <coughs> wards through college. And I'm sure that often circumstances have tried both your financial and emotional resources. <laughs> and it's really a testament to you that these graduates have been able to realise their potential, follow their dreams and express themselves in an art form they feel passionate about. You've given them really the wings to fly, and I would like you to I would like to thank you so sincerely for that. But today is really a celebration of the graduates, of their perseverance, their commitment, their drive, that has taken them through challenging, complex coursework and examinations, and made each one of them face themselves in a totally new, refreshing, and hopefully enlightening way. We've never been very good in dance, in the dance world generally at describing what we do as equally an intellectual art form as it is a physically instinctive one. <coughs> of course, dance makes strenuous demands on our bodies, and the rigorous training of that instrument is exhausting. I mean, how many dancers here have woken up in the morning doubled over with a body that refuses to straighten up, <laughs> hobbling to the shower with a limp, and aching from every muscle group of known and indeed unknown to man, <laughs> only having to repeat that cause of agony day after day after day? Dance is also exhausting mentally, not only in the building and enriching evolution of our imaginative capacities, giving shape to thought through physical language, translated <coughs> by the body to communicate into uh, ideas for audiences, which is in itself a rich and complicated process, but the psychological aspects of training that fuel motivation, confidence, discipline and tenacity prove that dance is as much in mind as it is in body. You have absolutely achieved the synergy of the period of your courses here, and it's a truly wondrous thing. But this is a compatibility, that sense of well-being, both mentally and physically, that will be a challenge for you the whole of your professional life. You'll be often on your own, challenging, facing these challenges, solo. And that somewhat daunting but thrilling journey starts here, it starts today. I graduated, I dare not say it, almost 20 years ago now, in a financial climate not that dissimilar to today. After the relative security of university, I was catapulted out into the real world with a lot of ambition, but not much clarity. Certainly no financial to support to match my creative aspirations. It can be a confusing time for graduates. Your artistic horizons reach out there in front of you where everything is possible and nothing seems off limits. But where do you start? What are the first steps to achieving your vision? This is especially unnerving when we are bombarded with news that the arts budgets are being slashed throughout the country, arts companies are being cut, and considering the difficult financial state of the nation at large, there doesn't seem to be much hope, let alone much opportunity. But I am a great believer in opportunity presenting itself 
to those who remain open, curious and fluid in their options. Certainly, beginning to build meaningful relationships, however small initially, with theatres, promoters, funders, dance agencies, schools, local authorities, community groups, wherever, in whatever context you can, gives you the chance to keep practising and enhancing your craft. And practising can definitely be in a range of modes, and potentially all at the same time, or all in the same week. Choreographically, performing, teaching, promoting dance, developing communities, administrating, writing applications, the list is endless. And simply finding yourself circumstances to practice in gives rise to opportunities emerging from the contacts you make in these situations. And a continued effort on your part to nurture those connections will always play pay dividends. Work starts to flow in a portfolio of expanding options. It's unusual to leave an arts learning institution with a full-time job. But this shouldn't be in any way discouraging, but genuinely motivating. Start small, build a portfolio of projects and create a network of champions and supporters. Then, deliver. On every project, however, however seemingly limited in scale. Don't wait for the big opportunity, the big commission, the prestigious school, or indeed the memorials of the Arts Council without actually applying for the funding. Be proactive, engineer as many projects as you can cope with, do them excellently, and you will find more and more brilliant opportunities present themselves to you. I started, when I first started in London in 1992, I uh, left university and became a dance amateur in the London Borough of Redbridge, which is not that far from here, two years. And basically what I did was I did tea dances, I organised um, community activities for young people, um, I worked a lot in schools. I didn't have any opportunities to make professional choreography, but what I did get the chance to do is to work with community groups to practice making choreography. I made a little piece for resolution at the place, a little 20 minute piece, and then I became the choreographer of residence at the place. It took time, but I started very, very small. It's not to say that you can't be ambitious. Setting yourself giant goals for the future and relishing in achieving them steadily is equally fulfilling. But try to do this practically with an action plan that's both adaptable and responsive. Dance is absolutely a contemporary art form, susceptible to rapid change and diversion. You need to keep the radar alert and the feet fast. At the same time, let's not forget that creativity is increasingly valued throughout the world as a key factor in recruitment generally. So way beyond the arts, and the UK is absolutely a world leader in innovation. Use and value the skills that you have acquired in your dance training and capitalise on their transferability in a broad range of contexts and environments. Don't limit yourself with conventional modes of operation. Creativity is one critical factor in a future economy where young people will be job creators, mm -hmm. not just job seekers. We cannot imagine the future opportunities and in the job market. You will have to invent them for yourselves. And the space is wide open <coughs> to do this. From personal experience, I know that a career in dance can be fulfilling, it can be sustaining, it can be surprising and petrifying. It can run smoothly, and at the same time, the pathway gets bumpy. It's never predictable and it's often uncertain. It's always personal and demands that you give of yourself to others. Artists have to constantly put themselves on the line, often for comment by large groups of people, critics and naysayers. It's a vulnerable and yet extremely stimulating and rewarding place to be. You can carve out your own space in the dance world, find your own audience and work with the participants and communities you choose. You can also make money in dance, as long as you have an entrepreneurial approach to all that you do. A business head to match your imaginative one. Your individual creativity, your ideas, your ideas really are assets. And therefore something that you can train productively. <laughs> Identifying and exercising your unique intellectual property is as valuable as auditioning your physical capabilities. Now is the time at the beginning of your professional life to explore all your options and exploit all that you have to offer. A slight request, please can you make sure that you keep plugging dance into the real world. Make it meaningful to a broad range of people and encourage them to share in the passion that has taken you to this moment in time and of course will act as a catalyst for tomorrow. So very many congratulations today on this your graduation day. I look forward to an engaging and dazzling future in dance and maybe perhaps beyond dance where you are the new inspirers, the new champions, the bright lights. Thank you very much.